Hey, all right, guys. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, well, here we are in the great state of Montana, and we're having a wonderful time out here because we have a wonderful God. We have a wonderful Lord, and uh, he made heavens and earth, and they declare his glory. And so, but we also exist here for the purpose of glory. That's why you and I have testimonies, okay? Now, um, what what are we doing here? I know we're in a quarantine, sort of like on March the 5th, I left... Um, I left Iquitos, Peru, and uh, I was only going to be gone for a few days, and I was hoping to get back by uh, March the 9th, but the whole place closed down. I mean, like, uh, um, Peru closed down, and I could not get back in. I tried to get in through Colombia, and Colombia was closed, and I tried to get in through Brazil, and uh, but that was closed, so that's just, that's just not working, period. Okay, so anyway, spare time. Redeem the time for the days are evil. And uh, what we are doing and have been doing here is really something I've desired to do in my heart for a long, long time. And that is to actually put together uh, an anointed, <laughs> because without the anointing, you can't destroy the yoke, a uh, curriculum, a Bible curriculum. And that's what we've been doing, okay? And what, what does it consist of? It's missionary training, okay? There are a lot of things that, there are a lot of things that people need, and uh, they well, God said my people were destroyed for lack of knowledge. And if we don't understand some real fundamental basic tenets of the faith, then it's really hard for us to continue. We pray with a lot of people that commit their lives to Christ for the first time ever. Um, we were out with... Uh, with Chopra in Inca Roca, Gaisha. I, Gaisha, it seems like just yesterday, but still, it's really important that people continue and grow in grace. So, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And this is what we do. We share the Word of God with people. Now, how do we do that? What's the order and the... Um, What's the syllabus for it, if I can use that word? Okay, well, the syllabus is simply this. What we are going to do is uh, we're going to do an overview of the New Testament. But in this overview, um, we're not starting like, if you have a Bible and you live in the West, okay, and if you are watching English, you probably do live in the West. And that is simply going to be that uh, you'll have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in your four Gospels and then the book of Acts. And then you start with the letters like Romans and you go through the letter of Jude. Okay, well, the reason they're in that order is not because of importance or anything else, but because of the volume, the size. Okay, well, you got you, you got Matthew 20, you know, you got Matthew, I think it's 24 chapters, or, or uh, Luke is 28, but the word count might be different. Mark is only 16 chapters. We have separated the category of the four Gospels, and instead of gone in that order, I have changed it into chronological order. So we have Mark. We start with Mark, and I'll say Mark 50 A.D., okay? I was born in 1951 A.D., so I really wasn't around at the time that Mark wrote it, but uh, 50 A.D. seems to be a pretty good estimate. If you go back and look at the dates of all these books, you're going to find out there's a range. Okay, anywhere from 40 to 60 and stuff like that. But Mark was definitely, obviously, John Mark, who is the author, uh, wrote the first scripture or the first first, uh, first bulletin, the first uh, gospel. That's the word I'm looking for. And he wrote the gospel, and then Matthew and Luke actually used it as a framework and expounded on it. Uh, John was like the year 90 or something. He was way later. Some, some people even put him over 100, but I don't know how long John lived. I know they say into his 90s for sure. Um, after he was exiled on Patmos, he went back to Ephesus, and uh, John, was, John was very busy writing, okay? And he wrote about who Jesus was, okay? Everybody else talks about um, his birth time. They give the Christmas story. Others have him, uh, um, he comes in at 30 years of age because that's the age to be a priest. But then you've got John that simply says, you know, forget all this birthday stuff and how old he was. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was God. And uh, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So John is way back. He's like pre-existent Christ, okay? So while Matthew may be telling the Jews that he really is the Messiah and Mark is telling what he did and Luke is telling what he taught, John is simply telling who he is. So we're starting with a sequence like that with a Bible school, and then I want to take the students right into the book of Acts, because the book of Acts is because I'm going to hit the letters right after that. First letter 
written by date chronologically is going to be 1 Thessalonians, okay? And uh, I know our Bible has Romans because it's the oldest letter, or it's the, it's the, not the oldest, it's the largest letter of the old world that we have. And so large comes first, and then it gets smaller going down. But really, uh, time-wise, 1 Thessalonians was written. So I want people to see, having gone through Acts, where Paul was and what was happening at that time so they can get an understanding because I am so tired of hearing Bible verses and prophetics this and all kinds of stuff totally out of context. It's, 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 it's like, it's crazy, okay? If you don't get the context of Scripture, there's something I heard for years of my life, and it's called um, text out of context is a pretext, okay? Fake, phony, forget it, okay? Yes, there are certain things you can apply to us spiritually, but don't tell me that that's the real meaning. Take that concept, that principle, and say, well, that should also or could also apply to our Christian life in this day and age. And by the way, as far as getting instructions and directions for our Christian life, Man, stick with the Bible, stick with the Bible, stick with the Bible. I can't emphasize that anymore. Everybody's going off on, oh, I had a dream, I had a revelation. And I believe in dreams, I believe in revelation, I believe in apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, government helps, diversities of gifts. I believe in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, okay? I believe in the baptism currently in this day and age of the Holy Spirit with all the word of knowledge and word of wisdom. And I believe in tongues and interpretation of tongues. I believe every Everything that's written in the scripture. I am no wise a dispensationalist. I believe that they all exist for this moment right now, okay? And they are, they can be appropriated now because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's been no there's been no change in him at all. But the Word of God is our source. The Bible, the escritura, escritura en español si quiere. Okay, the, es, the scripture, solo escritura, um, that's what leads our faith, our practice, our doctrine. This is where we get it. And I don't care what they say. If it's within the parameters of the Bible, it's acceptable. If it's outside of the parameters of Scripture, it is not acceptable at all. Okay, adios. You might as well go read a Jehovah Witness Bible or a Book of Mormon or something like that if you're just looking for other stuff. But if you really want to know what thus saith the Lord is, boom, boom. We've got it in the scripture. So we're going to go through this. And um, uh, for those that don't read, because I deal with a lot of people that unfortunately, or whatever I want to say, I don't know, that sounds kind of prejudiced. They don't speak English, okay? English is a very blessed language. I mean, we've got, we've got really detailed articulation. A lot of things can be explained. It's a very technical language, and it works. Of course, it seems as though historically, God has always, you know, had the Greek there. The Romans built the roads for for um, access in all the world, but the Greeks before, and uh, uh, they were, they had their, they had their fort or forte, if you want, and the Greek language is good. Hebrew is incredible. I don't speak Hebrew. I would love to. Um, I wonder what God and Adam spoke together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any idea, but I know that in context, it is also a extremely articulate, uh, detailed it, um, idiom, language that we have. Okay, so faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We are taking our time in Montana here and putting together this curriculum, but we also have it in audio form. Don't forget, for those of you that know us, we just handed out over 100 uh, audio New Testaments in the language of Tikuna. Now, they don't read well. No, some do read and write, but the majority of tribal people are not are not really avid readers. And I hate to say this, but even in good old sophisticated high tech America, reading is going down. Reading is just like people who used to read a lot; they don't read anymore. We look for icons, we get all our source and information audibly, and things like that. Okay, so but that's fine. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We put the New Testament in Tikuna. Uh, language on mp3 players that are solar powered because a lot of places in the jungle also don't have electricity okay so there's been quite a bit going on here um we have if you go to nbt.org you can uh, hit the little tab there that says school and it'll take you to an archive um i got most of it locked up because it's not finished yet but you can go to um there is spanish stuff there as well there si usted habla español pues que puede ir allá al sitio web nbt org y pues que hay una cosita allá un tab 
después que dice escuela. Tú puedes ir allá a visitar la escuela y hay algunas cosas en español también. Okay, so, um, but in English we also have them there. And we have it in, it'll say, audio Bible teaching or something like that. And it's just reading. It's just the book. I, I think I put the book of Mark on, which was basically because it's 16 chapters and also the first gospel to be written, as I said. And it was written to be heard, really. I mean, things are written in literary form. You can see that this guy really has this for, for scripting or something like that. But, you know, back in the old days, they didn't have chapters and verses, okay? It took 1,100 years for that to show up. If Paul... Er, gave Philemon a letter and he brought it to the Colossians or something, he would stand or somebody would stand in front of the congregation and open up that letter, unscroll it, and just start to read the letter, you know? And he wouldn't get down to like two-thirds of it and say, okay, come back next Wednesday and we're going to continue the rest of the letter. It just wasn't like that. They were meant, they were written to be read because there's a flow, there's a context of Scripture, okay? The mind of the Spirit is there. So anyway, we have this thing called audio and you can go in it and you can listen to all 16 chapters of Mark and at the end of the chapter what you listen to um, I ask you an essay question and you can sit and write and say yeah you know well this part I've heard Mark a thousand times but this part really kind of caught my attention today and then write it to me it's essay and the reason I'm doing essay is because number one I want the real communication, you know? We don't want just plain old rote, just plain old, and I don't mean that in the modern cultural sense. I, I want, I want, oh, no, wait a minute, sorry, that's woke. <laughs> Oops, my bad. Okay, uh, rote is just to, just to write something or say, or to repeat something really without thinking about it, okay? In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Well, what if they said 1493, Columbus sailed the deep blue sea? Which one would you pick, you know? Because they're both just easy to repeat and stuff like that. We need to learn critical thinking. We need to teach critical thinking, period. So, but there's nothing that can put you in a better position than being a Christian. Knowing God, fearing God, keeping God's commandments. All of a sudden, your mind will wake up. And, you know, all the dots that you could never connect before, you can connect them now. Okay, we're also going to have in the Bible school, we're working on, we've got English and Spanish, but there's topical themes, the fundamentals of the faith. The death, the birth, the life. Uh, wait a minute, hold, hold, hold on. I'm going backwards here. Um, the life, the death, burial, resurrection, um, ascension, the return, eternal judgment, heaven, hell. Uh, we, we've got we've got all these things in order to be taught because they are fundamentals that are really, really necessary. Because as I said, or Paul said really over in Acts 20, that after we're gone, the wolves are going to come in and they'll be bringing in the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons and the Baha'i and everybody else you can think of, you know, to say, well, this, you know, you know, Paul had a group of people that went after him wherever he preached the gospel. And they actually like said, okay, what Paul said was great, but, aha. Uh -huh, Let's go back to Jewish or to Hebrew roots. Let's go back. Let's add a little bit of uh, a little bit of law. Let's let's mix it in. Let's do some circumcision. Let's get some diets down. Let's get the dress down. Don't forget, you, you know. And and it's like it, it's a plague. It's an absolute total plague. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Okay, he that is uh, he that's filthy, let him be filthy still. He that's, um, he that's holy, let him be holy still. And for us that have chosen the way of Christ, let's just go on with him. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay, so we're going to go through it topically and go through things like like the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, uh, the ascension, the return of Christ. And in Hebrews, I guess, chapter 6, verse 2 or 3 around there, it talks about going up. We're going to do baptisms. We're going to do water baptism, repentance baptism, um, baptism of the Holy Spirit for today, you know. Um, and then we go through to a lot of different things, uh, which are um, replacement theology is going to be discussed because, Hey, man, people are going to come in and throw all kinds of crud at the church. It's been happening. Jesus said, you know, Peter, 
on your revelation that I am the Christ, I'm going to build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against that. What Against what? Peter's statement, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And when Jesus realized, well, of course, Jesus, I don't know. I don't think anything takes him by surprise. But when he realized that Peter spoke out the revelation, you're the Christ, the son of the living God, he thought, whoo, okay, the revelation has now passed from me, the son of God in the flesh incarnate, the incarnation, over to flesh and blood. And he told him, he said, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. And for the first time in scripture, the first time ever, Jesus spoke a word that had never come up before, and that word was church. Upon you, Peter, that rock, that statement, what you just made, that solid, immovable, immutable, eternal rock of who I am, I'm going to build my church. Okay, don't forget their concept of church was completely different. It was about this place, that place, these stones, this bricks, this form, this architecture, uh, you know, in this mountain, in that mountain, in the north, in the south, in Jerusalem, in the hills. No, 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 no. Spirit and in truth. That's where we come to worship God in spirit and in truth now. So anyway, but I, I uh, do covet your prayers for the Bible school, the curriculum that's coming up. It's great. And I'm real excited. We're adding other things to it too. Um, as far as a lot of themes that really, there's a lot of themes and ideologies that really need to be dealt with. Where are they on the list of Christian perspectives? You know, post-humanism, post-modernism. Um, we've got all all kinds of ideological things which we don't even recognize in our culture. And we need to like put the finger on them with the Bible, turn the spotlight of the Holy Ghost on and find out, are these things real? Are these things valid? Are these things really life changers? Can they do it? Or is this just a bunch of vain bunk, a bunch of philosophies? You know, look at, look at the syncretism that entered into the church, the Colossians. They were into all kinds of astrology and uh, all kinds of spiritism and getting messages from angels and all kinds of prophetic this and that was coming into their lives. And Paul wrote them a letter and said, whoa, hold it, just drop it. Every mystery, every secret, everything that is worth anything at all is found in the person of Jesus Christ. It's in him. As a matter of fact, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's in Jesus. So stop snooping around in your Gnosticism and your this philosophy and that philosophy, you know, like put the light of the gospel on it. So we will have that as a section too. You know, Jesus really is the answer. Look, I live here in the world just like you guys. I see socially, I see economically, I see the social engineering, the economic engineering. I see all the stuff that's going on in this world. I see all the games and the mind games being played. I see all the bait and switch tactics of people trying to do things that really aren't what they're trying to do it at they're like wolves in sheep's clothing, or yeah, that's right, wolves in sheep's clothing, you know, And uh, but Jesus is really the answer for whatever discontentment, whatever chaos in this world there is. Jesus said, in this world, hey, you're going to have tribulation. We have it. Welcome to planet earth. But he says, I've overcome it. Be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Whew. My peace give I unto you. It's not what the world gives. Don't think that you're going to get peace in the world. Okay, just because nobody's shooting a bullet at you doesn't mean that you have peace. Okay, but my peace give I unto you. That's a peace of heart. So do pray for the curriculum being developed here. Um, we, you know, most of you guys listening to me are in America now. We have tons of stuff here. You can go on YouTube and find a whole lot better than I'm telling you right now. But, uh, we actually go off into the Amazon jungle and the villages in different places, and we have six and eight, you know, a six-hour Bible study is not unusual for us. Why? Because they're hungry. They're starving. They keep wanting to know, you know, who put the fish in the river? Who planted the trees in the forest? They want to know. These questions are real because they haven't gotten desensitized to the point that they just take the gospel and Jesus for granted, period. Okay, so one more thing, and I'm going to finish with this, and that is that uh, prayer request. We have a group of teams. We do a Bible study on Monday and Thursday nights, and 
it's only in Spanish, pues que lo siento. Pero si usted habla español y quiere participar con nosotros lunes y, uh, lunes y jueves por la noche, it's on Zoom. It's a Zoom meeting. And contact me and I'll send you a link for it and all that stuff. Uh, I want you in my contacts, though, because I don't want just, you know, a bunch of harassment, period. Okay. But it is in Spanish. Okay. Estudio Bíblico en Puro Español. Si quieres, pues que ahí está. En Zoom. Okay. Dos veces a la semana. But, uh, what I want to say about this group is they are some serious, serious, serious prayer warriors, okay? I mean, they fast. Who fasts in this day and age? <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, they're really serious prayer people. So if you have serious prayer stuff, please give us a call and uh, connect with us. And we would love to talk with you and uh, pray for you. Okay, that's it. I'm seeing little tags coming up on my screen here. I don't know what that means, but maybe it means that I'm finished. Let me put my thing on. Oh, Loretta. Hi, Loretta. Nice to see you. Wave. <laughs> okay. So anyway, well, you, you, you're not waving back, are you? <laughs> okay. Anyway, but God bless you. We love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Be in prayer with us. And um, okay, more later. Ciao, bambinos.